Hello, uh, this is Song Han. I'm the mod moderator of uh, session 2B today. Uh, welcome to uh, IC Co conference uh, this morning. Uh, this session title is Korean Development Projects and Plans in Myanmar. Uh, there are many uh, development projects going underway in Yangon and Myanmar area. Uh, and Korea is one of the uh, active participants uh, among the foreign countries. Uh, it is well known that China has been uh, vigorously investing in Myanmar, uh, especially in northern area. And Japan is very strong uh, investor uh, historically. And these days, uh, Singapore and even Vietnam is also participating for the development of Myanmar. And Korea is uh, recently being uh, uh, heavily invested in and showing the uh, 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 peculiar interest in Myanmar investment. And today, we are going to cover some of the projects uh, being carried by uh, the Korean, uh, Korean develop developers and construction companies. Um, and uh, the first one is uh, done by first project is done by the BXT International uh, in Rakhine State. And uh, uh, the project uh, will be explained by the Vice President Chair, but uh, he has uh, recorded the presentation in Korea, Korean. So I will uh, briefly uh, translate in the real time uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the audience in English. Please. 안녕하세요. 미얀마 BXT 개발 사업을 소개할 BXT 인터내셔널의 진원 부사장입니다. 발표를 시작하겠습니다. 발표 순서는 BXT 그룹 소개, 실제 도시 개발 사업 소개, 향후 계획 사업 소개 순으로 말씀드리겠습니다. And the future, future prospect projects. BX Group is founded by the chairman of the company. BX Group is founded by the chairman of the company. Busan Cosmos Terminal, BX Global, BX International, Green Tech Korea, and Myanmar Sabun, BX International is in charge of Myanmar projects. BX International에서 설명드리겠습니다. BX International에서는 미얀마 현지에 설립된 법인으로 부동산 개발과 건설하는 회사입니다. 2011년 7월에 사업 준비를 위해 미얀마에 진출하였고, 2013년 10월에 미얀마 현지 법인을 설립하였습니다. 2015년 6월에 시트의 도시개발 사업에 대한 라카인 주정부와 MOU를 체결하였으며, 10월에 MOA를 체결하였습니다. 2016년 3월에 MIC 투자 승인을 받아 4월에 착공하였습니다. 2019년 4월 1단계 매립을 완료하고 주정부로부터 토지 판매 허가를 받아 토지 판매를 시작하였으며 2020년 3월에 시트의 도시 개발 사업에 대한 준공을 하였습니다. 다음은 시트의 도시 개발 사업에서 자세히 소개하겠습니다. 사업장 위치는 나카인조 시트의 시시입니다. 개발 면적은 90에이커 11만 평이고 공사 기간은 4년, 공사 금액은 1,700만 불 소요되었습니다. 토지 판매는 중공 후 5년간 판매할 수 있습니다. 밑에 사진의 우측 둥근은 부분이 BX에 조성한 부지입니다. 주민 상공간은 200m 거리로 도심권에 위치하여 있습니다. 개발 과정을 설명드리면 사업지는 구도심과 접하여 호환 길이 2.1km를 지옥중과 수석을 이용하여 반파지를 쌓고 준설선으로 바닷모래를 제치하여 평균 2.1m 모래를 채워 만든 부지입니다. 중공 후 진행 현황으로는 현재 공사, 교량 공사가 진행되고 있으며 미국 투자자를 유치하여 쇼핑몰 공사 인허가를 받아 착공 중에 있습니다. 토지 판매 상황은 BXT 지분에 대해서 약 20%를 판매 중이며 코로나19 팬데믹으로 인해 소규모 판매만 진행 중에 있습니다. 
핸드백 중 호텔과 쇼핑몰 공사를 계획대로 진행 예정입니다. 다음은 개발 마스터 플랜입니다. 중심 상권을 중심으로 상업 시설과 콘도 그리고 시설물 가공 지역으로 계획하였습니다. 다음은 공사 진행 과정 사진입니다. 2015년 3월 현황 측량을 시작했고 2016년 3월에 가도를 완성하여 어, 본격적으로 공사가 진행되고 되었고 호환과 방파제 그리고 준설 과정의 사진입니다. 다음은 드론 우측은 사업지 현황 사진입니다. 이때는 터지 판매 계획 현황도입니다. 붉은색 부분이 전부 지분이고 나머지 플롯으로 나뉜 부분이 기획지에서 판매하는 부지입니다. 다음은 토시 판매 구도입니다. BX 인터내셔널에서 100% 공사를 시행하여 주정부에 30%를 주는 구도이며 BX에서 땅을 팔면 정부에서 구성한 토지 판매 위원회를 통해 토지 판매 대금을 관리하게 되어 있습니다. 다음은 토지 판매 가격 샘플입니다. 토지 판매는 어, 50에서 120평 규모로 나누어 평당 어, 250만 선에서 판매되고 있습니다. 다음은 쇼핑몰에 대해 설명드리겠습니다. 쇼핑몰 위치 사진입니다. 중심 상권과 인접한 부지입니다. 쇼핑몰은 이보이신 컴퍼니에서 7,658제곱미터 부지에 약 950만 불 투자하는 사업입니다. 다음은 어, BX 기부 부지에 세워지는 파고다로 대형 불상 관리 계획도입니다. 다음은 시트의 도시 개발 과정의 시행착오에 대해서 말씀드리겠습니다. 첫 번째, 사업을 준비하는 초기의 오류로서 미얀마 사업 파트너와의 갈등으로 직접 공사를 수행하는 과정에서 시간과 금전적인 손실이 컸으며 동남아나시에 대한 대비책을 세우지 못해서 어, 예상보다 공사기간이 많이 지연되었습니다. 그리고 정권이 바뀌는 과정이 정치적인 문제와 라카인주 관할 지역 내 방문가의 규전 어, 그리고 코로나19 등 정치, 사회 문제에 대하여 능동적인 대처가 어려워 많은 어려움을 겪었습니다. 두 번째로 공사 진행 과정의 문제점으로 초기 사업 단계에서 어, 설계 조사를 할수 있는 장비나 기술력 있는 협력사가 없어서 방파제용 사석이나 준설 모래 등 어, 설계가 잘못되어 많은 설계 변경이 이루어졌고 또한 하도급 협력업체, 건축자재 장비 및 숙련 등 기술자 부족으로 인한 공사 수행에 많은 어려움이 있었습니다. 또한 주정부에서 유사 프로젝트 수행 경험이 없어 의사결정이 지연되고 이미 결정된 사항도 자주 변경되어 민원이나 연방정부 기관과의 이해충돌 등 계약서상의 문제점이 발생 시 정부에서 대처가 안 되어 사업주가 직접 해결해야 하는 문제로 공사 중기 등 공사 진행에 어려움이 있었습니다. 세 번째로 토지 분양의 과정의 문제점으로 사진 분양에 대한 이해 부족과 토지 판매 절차, 판매 승인 등 많은 혼선을 겪었으며 제대로 된 분양 기밀서가 없어서 직접 고용 형태의 업체 운영을 하다 보니 시행 착오가 많았습니다. 세 번째로 향후 추진 사업에 대해서 말씀드렸습니다. 어, 라카인주 짜표의 복합산업단지인 스마트시티와 나팔리 비치의 마린스포츠 콤플렉스입니다. 지도에서 보듯이 라카인주는 어, 미얀마 서북부 해안을 끼고 있는 지역이며 라카인이 주도는 시트의 시티이고 주위 중앙에 위치한 짜표 시티는 많은 석유와 천연가스가 매장되어 있는 지역으로 우리나라 대우 인터내셔널에서 개발한 가스전이 파이프라인을 통해 전량 중국으로 추출되고 있는 지역입니다. 나팔리 비치는 주위 남쪽에 위치한 지역으로 아름다운 해안 경관을 보유하고 있어서 유럽의 관광객들이 많이 찾고 있는 곳입니다. 그러면 다음 BXD 사업 중 짜표 스마트티에서 소개해 드리겠습니다. 스마트티는 짜표의 뉴시티 지역에 위치하여 가스프랜트와 발전소가 인근에 있고 공항과 구두심 접근이 용이하며 인근에 
중국에서 경제자유구역 개발 1단계 공사가 진행되고 있습니다. 계획 부지는 낮은 구릉지로 임야와 농경지로 구성되어 있습니다. 사업장 위치는 라카인주 짜퓨시티이며 사면적은 957에이커 사업비는 1억 1천만불입니다. 공사기간은 3년이고 어, 산업단지와 상업, 물류, 주거단지를 계획하고 있습니다. 다음은 스마트시티 마스터플레이입니다. 다음은 사업계획진의 토지이용계획도입니다. 1, 2, 3단계로 사업을 진행 예정입니다. 1단계 어, 사업은 산업공단으로 300에이커입니다. 다음은 사업진행 경입니다 2019년 8월 30일에 주정부로부터 사업 제한 요청을 받아 10월 11일에 주정부 경제부장관과 uh, 건설 교통부장관에게 브리핑을 했고 2020년 11월 18일에 2 0 1 1년 11월 18일에 2019년 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 11 And the business process and profit, uh, profit uh, feasibility analysis is carried out. Is being carried out. 이 3단계 사업을 진행하여 리스크를 최소화할 계획입니다. 프로젝트 IR은 17%로 분석되었습니다. BXD 사업 중에 두 번째로 나팔리 비치의 마린 스포츠 컴플렉스를 소개하겠습니다. 위치는 딴데 시티의 나팔리 비치며 사업 면적은 82에이커. And the marine sports complex has 82 acres of area and construction house or the budget is expected to uh, reach $15 million and the construction period is for four years. And the business purpose of that this marine uh, sports complex is uh, for safer uh, uh, fishing uh, environment through the landfill construction. And to reclaim the coast line. b u n g a p a l i is a famous resort town with uh, the uh, future plan, and the conceptual development plan is shown on. And the land use diagram is shown also with the hotel and resort. With a hotel area and wave park, which is a commercial and hotel mixed area, and the orange area is for the government uh, hotel and uh, administration office. And the wave park will be a, 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 the trophy uh, project. For the uh, marine sports complex, and many other activities will be carried out on this project. And the BX International appreciates for uh, the chance of the business in here. Our BX International 초대해 주시고 사업 설명에 기를 주신. And we will be uh, willing to participate uh, eagerly for this project. And thank you. And uh, for those projects, uh, uh, on the presentation, uh, starting from uh, 19 to 22, we had some uh, difficulties showing on the screen for the presentation. So uh, after uh, the uh, other presentation is all done, we'll uh, try to catch up on those uh, materials of the few missing pages translation. Uh, my uh, apologies for the te technical difficulties. On that project, and the second presentation will be uh, about the analyzing the process of urbanization in Myanmar. Uh, the, uh, and the third one will be third presentation will be about the KMIC project, and the last one will be about 
eco eco green city projects in Yangon. The pres uh, presenter on the second one is uh, Jin Jin Shui from Myanmar, and the third one is Mr. Jung Uk Lee of KMIC, uh, and the uh, the last one will be done by the Hyunwoo Mike Kim of Alliance Stars Group of Companies. We will have a series of three presentation and we'll, I will get back to you on the Q&A section afterwards. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present a paper about the analyzing the process of organization in Myanmar. In my paper, there are five main sessions. Uh, in my presentation, there are five main sessions, introduction, literature review, methods and data, key findings, and finally, I will conclude my presentation. Let me start the first session. Organization is the process in which settlements of people, farms, and other activities grow in the area named urban during a particular period of time. The most urbanized regions of the world can be found in the most developed regions. For example, North America has 82% of that population living in urban area in 2014, followed by Latin America 80% and Europe 73%. According to United Nations 2014, the least urbanized regions of the world are found in the least developed regions. Africa has 40% and Asia has 48% of those population living in urban area. However, rapid urbanization is evolving in worldwide, accommodated by economic growth and population growth. Therefore, attentions of many policymakers and researchers have been increasing. According to UNPT 2015, ASEAN countries experience economic growth as their urbanization level increase. The main driving force of urbanizations are foreign direct investment and participation in global value change. Moreover, in the ASEAN country, the economy has shifted from an agriculture-based economy to an industry-based and survey-based economy. If urbanization is caused by migration from rural to urban areas, then it can be increased income of rural households with migrants through remittance. If rural workers migrate to urban because of higher wages, then rural labor supplies may reduce, which in turn leads to increase in real wages. Therefore, urbanization can have best impacts on welfare of rural households. In my paper, there are two main objectives. The first one is to understand the dynamics of urbanization focusing on demographic trends in order to prove that migration is an important factor in urbanization in Myanmar. The second one is to investigate whether the degree of urbanization in one district is related to the degree of urbanization in its neighboring districts using the spatial reference variables of urbanization index. There are two research questions. The first one is whether migration is processed the main contributor to the process of urbanization in Myanmar or not. And the second question is whether there are spatial autocorrelation in spatially referenced variables of urbanization index. Now let me present the literature that are related to my paper. Urbanization is defined as the process share of population residing in urban areas. According to Boston and Bovia 2010, urbanization is distant, distant from urban population growth. If population is in both urban and rural area, uh, area are growing at the same rates, then there is no urbanization. Rate of urbanization and the rate of urban population growth are equal. If total population is not changing, but the share of urban population is increasing, then all urban population growth is the result of urbanization. 
If urban growth is not due to natural population growth, then rural urban migration becomes a key factor in urbanization. This migration process enhances the process of urbanization through agglomeration efforts in production and consumption. Therefore, these agglomeration economies and urbanization have significant positive impact on economic growth and GDP per capita across country. Now let me discuss the method and data that I use in my paper. In my paper, I use demographic analysis and spatial analysis for the processing the urbanization in Myanmar. To examine the net Net migrations of population from rural to urban attributes encouraging to urbanization, I'm going to use demographic analysis. And to test the existence of spatial autocorrelation in spatially referenced data of urban index, and to explore whether the degree of urbanization in one district interacts that in its neighboring districts, I'm going to use spatial analysis. In order to analyze the urbanization process, I'm going to use three indicators in my paper. The first one is urban share, which is the traditional indicators. And the second one is night timeline index per square kilometer, and the third one is building index per square kilometer. For urban share, I'm going to use Myanmar population and housing census in 2014. This is the key demographic and housing indicators and fully represent down to the wet level. According to this census, total population in Myanmar is 50.1 million. Among them, 40.9 million or about 30% of total population resides in urban area. Among all districts, Yangon and Yangon East and Yangon West have the large urban population share, followed by Mandalay. The second indicator is nighttime light index. Per kilometer square, this can be obtained by using this formula. Nighttime light index equal to average nighttime lights from zero, uh, 2004 to 2013 divided by area of districts. And the third indicator is building index per square kilometer. This can be obtained by the, uh, by the this equation, numbers of buildings divided by area of districts. According to the calculating process, the three largest values of building index are found in West Yangon, East Yangon, and Mandalay. After calculating these three indicators, I found that these three uh, urbanization indicators are highly correlated each other. This can be seen in this correlation matrix. To calculate this indicator, I use Myanmar population and housing census in 2014, Myanmar historical yearbook 2011, 2015, 2016, and 2017, urban group data, and nighttime lights. This can be obtained from different meteorological satellite program operational light scan system, and the third uh, final data so is OpenStreetMaps data. This data can be freely downloaded from different websites and the data model can be converted into popular data formats like shapefine data formats. But in my paper, OSM, OSM data set used in this study can be obtained from the website of Myanmar Information Management Unit. Now, let me present the key findings of my paper. I found that the net migrations of population from rural to urban attributes encouraging to urbanization. The role of urban, rural urban migration can be considered as a main contributor to urbanization in Myanmar over time. 
And this rope can be likely to pour across the region with different levels of development within Myanmar. This can be seen in this table. The first column, total, when we see the top, first column total growth rate, total growth rate in urban area are always higher than total growth rate in rural area. And when we see the natural increase rate, to, uh, natural increase rate in rural area is always higher than urban area. When we see the net migration rates, urban area is always higher than rural areas. So according to this research, net migration and net, net migrations or rural to urban migration can contribute to urbanizations in Myanmar. When we see the spatial analysis, I'm, go I'm going to test whether the spatial autocorrelation among the spatially referenced urbanization index. I will use moral eye index. The method of location indicators of spatial association, I obtained cluster and significant map. This is for urban share. This is for nighttime light index. This is for building index. According to this reset, there is auto specialization in the specially referenced data of urbanization index. According to modern eye index, modern eye value of, value of urban share is 0 0.25 in urban share, 0 0.304 in nighttime light index, 0 0.2884 building index. So there is positive auto special like, um, autocorrelation in spatially referenced data. In order to get the robust reset, I continue to test the permutation method. According to this method, mean values of permutations method is always lower in three, uh, all of these three indicators. All the resets are statically significant p value and the positive set values are obtained. And the null hypothesis of spatial randomness is strongly rejected. Therefore, the presence of positive spatial autocorrelation can be occur in spatially referenced variables of urban share, nighttime light index, and building index in Myanmar. The presence of spatial autocorrelation have often revealed that there is something of interest in these spatially referenced variables. And also it attracts the further investigation to understand the reason behind the observed spatial variation. Now let me conclude my presentation. According to the reset, increase in share of urban population is mainly due to the net migrations of population from rural to urban. This is because rural to urban migration attributes more enhancement to urbanization than rural urban differential in natural increase. The role of rural urban migration has been a main contributor to urbanization in Myanmar. Urbanization in Myanmar is predictable to rise rapidly in the context of recent socioeconomic and political transformation. Spatially reference variable of urban share, nighttime light index, and building index used for urbanization index in Myanmar have positive spatial autocorrelation. There is positive, there is positive relationship between the urbanization index at one district and the urbanization index at its neighboring districts. 
This relationship attracts further investigation in order to understand the reason behind the observed spatial variation. Besides the traditional measure of organization, night timeline index and building index can be utilized as the proxy for organization index because these satellite source dig digital index are highly correlated with sensor speed data, urban share. Thank you. My name is Lee jung -wook, Managing Director of KMIC. I'm very glad to join this conference. Also, thank you for giving me this good opportunity to introduce KMIC project to you. KMIC is a kind of G2G-based industrial complex development project supported by both Korea and Myanmar government. Today, through this presentation, I am going to give you some information about KMIC from overview uh, to the economic effect. First, let me talk about the overview of the project. It is titled Korea Myanmar Industrial Complex. We call it simply KMIC. It is located at the Yangyepin in Lego Township. 10 kilometer north of Yangon and 25 kilometers away from Yangon International Airport. Also, it is very close to Yangon Mandalay Expressway. The total area is 556 acres and it will be developed in two phases. The project cost is $110 million. Project period is five years from 2019 to 2024. Uh, let me explain the financing method of this project. Myanmar government invested 40% with the land lease. So they, they, they invested land lease payments uh, to the JP company. Also, a public corporation in Korea, LH, invested 40% in cash, and Korea private company, Global Share, invested 20% in cash. So they founded JB Company for the project. Let me show you the history of this project. This project started from the senior officials' talk for economic cooperation between two countries in 2013. Through the site selection in 2015, we signed MOA in 2017. And finally, we got the MIC permit in 2019. And we are going to commence the actual construction at the end of this year. This is the picture taken during the launching ceremony, September last year. With the attendance of uh, President of Korea and Vice President from Myanmar. And this is me. Now let me show you the present status of the site. This site used to be a training center for political party in Myanmar. So there are several buildings and structures still left. This is Union Hall. This building will be preserved by the request of Myanmar government. And the community house will be renovated to use uh, as a site office and other buildings and structures will be demolished by Myanmar government. There were 10 households of squatters along the boundary, like this, as you see here. So we relocate them from the site to newly developed site with the basic 
public services. This was supported by uh, Yangon region government. So they moved to new homes like this. Now we are transforming the community center to the temporary site office. The works are underway. Also, we cleared the road like this to access the site. This road was covered with trees and bushes before. Also, we installed fences around the site to prevent additional squatters. Let me show you the development concept. The ultimate purpose of this project is promoting local economy by attracting investment from Korea to the well-developed site with high-quality facilities. This is the land use plan for the project. Most of land, over more than 70% land will be used for industrial area. But there are other uh, land for other uses, like residential area, commercial area, techno park, and public facilities. We are going to accommodate uh, several types of industries here, such as construction materials, food industry, textile and garment industry, logistics, and electronic assembly industry. But those industries are not limited. So if they can have permit from Myanmar government, they can invest here. This is the land use plan for first phase development. So most of the area will be used for industrial uses. Techno park is for high technology industry that produces lesser pollution. And this is detention reserve to protect this site from flooding. And this area will be used as a park to provide pleasant environment to the people. Also, there will be uh, waste, waste, waste water treatment facility. And this red area is for commercial use, like this. We have already conducted a soil inspection and topographical survey for detailed design. So we drill the holes on the site, like this, to test the soil. This is the road plan on the site. There will be several types of roads. According to the future uh, traffic flow, so they have different widths according to the future traffic amount. Also, we are going to install public facilities on the site according to Myanmar and international environmental standards, such as water supply, sewage treatment facility, drainage system, and power supply system. Also, we planned some parks and greenways and some iconic sculptures to provide a pleasant uh, place for the people. This is the plan for multi-purpose park. Also, we are going to apply some high technologies and renewable energy to the sites to 
reduce the impact on the environment and also uh, for the safety and health for the people. So this is the monitoring camera and security alarm system. This will be, this will be installed uh, on the steel lamp. Also, solar energy will be used for the uh, lamps around the park. We will uh, construct the main gate as the landmark of the complex, and this landmark will give some good impression to the people. Now let me explain the schedule of the project. Uh, actually, we made a tender announcement uh, in October this year, and we are going to commence the actual construction at the end of this year. It will be completed in 2022. So it will take about two years. From 2021, we are going to lease out the land. Actually, we will accept the advanced reservation from the end of this year. Without any particular problems, the investors will be able to operate their business from 2023. If the rent lease for the first phase development is successful, after that, we are going to develop the second phase. This is the outside infrastructure plan. There are outside, major outside infrastructures, such as access road, power supply, and water supply line. These infrastructures will be installed by Myanmar government, funded by Korean government EDCF. This is the access road, and this is the electricity transmission line, and this is water supply line. Korea and Myanmar government will support this project. First, the Korean government, they provide investment consulting, financial loan, and credit guarantee through uh, public corporations and government agencies. Myanmar government will establish one-stop one service to facilitate the public approval process. Now, as the last part of this presentation, uh, let me show you the economic impact of this project. We estimated the production inducement effect is $4.7 billion. And also it will generate 420,000 jobs by this project. These numbers are calculated by the method of uh, inter-industry analysis method. So it is not so accurate but I'm sure it will cause a certain amount of economic, positive economic effect on this area. This is the imaginary view after completion. Okay, another. Uh, this is the view of a residential area and the park. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. And if you want more information about KMIC, you can visit KMIC website here. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in person after this corona light subsides. Thank you for listening again. Jeju Tenbarea.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kim hyun -woo, Business Development Manager of Alliance Talk Group of Companies. It is an honor for me to introduce about our Ecograce project in such a meaningful place. I prepared two chapters for this presentation. First is about introduction of Ecograce project. Second is about Ecograce feasibility study plan. Then. I will start to introduce about Ecogrinity project firstly. This is our master plan of Ecogrinity. First of all, one of our biggest strengths is that Yangon Mandalay Expressway runs across our site. This condition makes the great accessibility from Yangon and Nepido. In addition, Korea and Myanmar governments are promoting Korea Myanmar Industrial Complex, which has abundant job expense. It is also very close to Hlegu region, the fast developing area. And we plan our site as two parts. Left side is affordable area, right side is regional area. Ekgurin City was first planned in March 2015. Ecogristi master plan was completed in August 2017 by Nikaseki. It finally signed a contract with MOC in January 2019 after going through many steps. The construction of phase 1A and B is currently under construction from April 2019. Recently, we started the Water Infrastructure Feasibility Study with POSCO ENC from August 2020. First, as you can see from the Yangon Region New Town Development Plan, our site is at the center of interconnection with other new towns. Also, our site will link to several road development projects in Hlegu area plus KMIC. Yangon is Myanmar's economic capital and has the greatest potential in this area. Also, Hlegu area is one of the fastest growing area in Yangon region. Echo Green City is 35 kilometers from Yangon City Hall, 24 kilometers from Yangon International Airport, 34 kilometers from Hantawadi International Airport, and 39 kilometers from Yangon port. In addition, it is only 1.6 kilometers away from Korea Myanmar Industrial Complex. We look forward to make strong synergies with KMIC together. The total area is 1,453 acres with 150,000 planned residents. This project is a PPP project joined with Myanmar government and Alliance Stars Group. And Alliance Stars Group get the role as a master developer and land owner. Order cost is 2 billion US dollar estimated by Myanmar government. The project has total three phases and each page has a five year development plan. Firstly, phase one is divided to A, B and C. A, low-cost housing, and B, logistic hall are currently under construction. Page 1C has a plan to move toll gate behind our site. We are still looking for the good partners for page 1A, B, and C. In addition, basic facilities such as infrastructure, rest camp, and bus terminal will also be constructed. Page 2 is planning on agricultural facilities and middle cost housing. At page 3, we are planning regional facilities such as media village, golf resort, high cost housing, and high rise building. However, each page plans can change program flexibly depending on the market situation and requirement. 
The core of Echo Green City is located at the junction of Yangon Mandalay Expressway and Yangon Auto Ring Road plan. We are planning this place as logistic hub street in Northern Yangon. And it has roles as hotel, resort, media village, golf resort, and agricultural park. This zone is expected to be higher importance in the future and to be developed very rapidly with the development of the surrounding areas such as KMIC. In particular, large outlet, media village, and luxury golf resort are expected to attract more Yangon citizens with developing bus terminal. Next, I will introduce the possibility of our project. Also, it is on the Myanmar government priority development list in Project Bank. And this project is very consistent with Myanmar government national development plan intention as part of Myanmar sustainable development plan and Greater Yang 2040 plan. In addition, we are strongly preparing for the infrastructure of Echo Green City. Currently, we have a plan to build a 30 megawatt solar power plant inside of Echo Green City site for eco-friendly energy. In Myanmar Sustainable Development Plan, it has total five goals, and three of them are consistent with our project goals that job, human resource, and environment. This development plan will remain the Myanmar government policy stance until 2030. And this is very close to the development timeline of Echo Green City project. Therefore, we plan to stand the development direction of Echo Green City project with the current government policy line. Let me introduce the ongoing low cost housing of page 1A. The planned low cost houses are total five blocks, 121 buildings, and 3,341 units. And now, 28 buildings and 1,070 units are currently under construction. Firstly, we are constructing 28 buildings to deliver it to Myanmar government in 2021. This is a logistic hub plan for page 1B. We are planning to develop 23 acres firstly for profitable business out of total 133 acre logistic hub area. This area has a role as a rest camp of Yango Mandalay Expressway. In, Yang, in August 2019, we signed an MOU with Korea government company, Seoul Metro, to adopt advanced smart logistic technologies. Let me introduce about a brief overview of Myanmar government project bank. The main objectives of project bank are first, to provide affordable housing for low income citizens. Second, to improve the communication and transportation in Northern Yangon. Third, to improve the standard for living of residents of Yangon. Ecobility is a major development project of Myanmar government, also included in Union and Yangon project banks. Alliance Dutch Group has all the certification on land and permit of master developer. And we are possible to consign plot by plot development Development can proceed in two ways that forming JV and leasing land. Eco Green City is five year tax holiday scheme by Myanmar Investment Commission, MIC. Eco Green City also applies to the Joint Credit Mechanism JCM program of Japan government. This chapter is for introducing about Eco Green City feasibility study plan cooperating with POSCO ENC recently. 
Ecocristi Water Infrastructure Feasibility Study Project outline is as following. The project title is Feasibility Study on the Water Treatment Plant and Waste Water Treatment Plant for Eco Green City in Yangon, Myanmar. This FS team is organized by POSCO ENC, Yusin Engineering, and Gyeongdong Engineering. And planned project schedule is from August 2020 to August 2021, total 12 months. FS project budget is 750 million won, and this project is supported by Korea government. Water plant project scale is 140 million US dollar by pr private financing. The plant construction period is from 2021 to 2024. The issue of eco green city water infrastructure are total three categories. First, water supply plant are plant total 40,000 ton per day by one facility. It is concerned not only eco green city site but also Lego area and KMIC. Second, waste water treatment plant are plant total 40,000 ton per day by two facilities. Lastly, our concept of water infrastructure is recovery water cycle with eco-friendly city image, not only usage. Alliance Touch Group and POSCO ENC made the MOU for this Eco Green City Water Infrastructure Project in October 2019. This is the FS solution concept for Eco Green City. There were three water issues in Eco Green City before starting FS. First is water shortage, second is energy shortage, third is water cycle distortion. So, we plan to adapt the POSCO ENC's smart water technologies as smart water grid, decentralized water supply system, and positive impact development. The expected benefits are 40% independence rate of water resource securement, and 20% energy saving, and 30% water cycle recovery. In April 2020, MOU sent an LOI letter for accepting FS operating by POSCO ENC, which has high performance and technical skills. Also, MOC accepted POSCO ENC's pre-FS report officially. After confirming FS support from Korea government, it was released through more than 80 medias in Korea. Capability of following related projects are three issues after finishing Eco Green City Water Infrastructure Project. First, after successful performance of water resource and infrastructure, we can expect entry into housing and resort projects in the next phase. Second, we can expect the possibility of entering construction and IT sector. For construction sector, there are water resources, water infrastructure, plant, road, and ETC. For IT sector, ITS, smart water grid, smart city, operation and management, and ETC. Third, we can read future Myanmar smart city by operating Eco Green City, the first smart city in Myanmar. In conclusion, we can expect the increase in the linkability of following related projects and read the direction of future city development from Eco Green City project. We expect this smart water infrastructure project to be the first step in developing Myanmar Eco Smart City. I hope 
it will be an opportunity to promote Korea's outstanding smart city technology to the world as well as Southeast Asia through Eco Green City project. Thank you for your attention. Please feel free to ask me any questions about Eco Green City project or any other matter. Okay, uh, we have seen uh, four presentations so far. Uh, so I think uh, uh, you have uh, probably uh, the, a vague idea about how uh, active uh, the Korean companies are working in uh, Myanmar area. And you also have some idea about urbanization in, uh, going under in Myanmar, uh, presented by uh, Professor Jin Jin Shui of Yangon University of Economics. Uh, now is the Q&A section. Uh, uh, every uh, anyone who is interested in any uh, top uh, any topics, uh, previous four topics, uh, are free to uh, uh, have raise your hand. I'm not sure if you can uh, <laughs> look at the hand uh, raising hand uh, in this Zoom uh, pro uh, application. Uh, any questions on the presentations? Well, also, it's uh, open to the floor. Uh, there are about four, five people uh, sitting in uh, this room. Uh, uh, President Kang, do you have a question? If you have a uh, mask on the uh, uh, on the face, uh, I can't really uh, recognize, uh, especially. I don't hear the questions coming from the President Khan. So uh, if uh, you have any question, please raise your hand like me. Or uh, the uh, starting question on the e Eco Green City project in Yangon to uh, Mr. Hyunwoo, Mike Kim. And uh, how far is this project site is from the KMIC uh, industrial complex? Which was yes. the third presentation before you? Yes, yes, right, right. So, uh, Eco Green City project and uh, KMIC project is very close together. It's only 1.6 kilometers away each other. Mm. So, uh, on your planning of the Eco Green City, do you have the, uh, 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 the in industrial uh, park? Is being established on time so that you can uh, uh, attract more people who will be working on the industrial complex, is it? It's right. So um, we have uh, uh, various types of uh, resident area for uh, luxury area and also low cost housing. So uh, we can have uh, uh, workers in the uh, uh, KMIC. So uh, we have a um, very acceptable uh, uh, capability for residents in eco mm. And uh, uh, how, uh, as far as I know, uh, when you uh, undergo the, uh, the feasibility study on this eco green city, do you expect uh, how, much, how, how, much, how much participation from Korean side? Uh, either uh, a government or uh, the uh, private sectors. How much mm -hmm. portion do you expect from Korea? Uh, um, uh, for the uh, uh, FS plan, um, we already have some uh, 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 investment uh, uh, strategy for the, uh, uh, this infrastructure project. Uh, we expect that 30% um, uh, from the uh, invest from Korea side, uh, not only government side, uh, also uh, private sector. And uh, the 70% is from our uh, uh, Myanmar company side. Uh, but it it's can be changed, I think, uh, because it is uh, uh, depend on the, the market situation, I think. And this one is located on the north of uh, downtown Yangon, I, I, I believe. And that area is mostly uh, uh, being invested by the Singaporeans or, or Japan. Um, no, Japan is mostly uh, 
east or southeast uh, area of Yangon. And uh, do you uh, believe that uh, set sectional uh, division is occurring in Yangon area for uh, foreign countries to uh, mainly focus on specific areas, do you think? Uh, actually, like for example, Korea, Korea is focusing more, more on uh, Dala area and north, northern part of Yangon, like uh, industrial complex and eco green city. And yes. China is uh, in, uh, heavily uh, focusing on the western uh, side development of uh, New Yangon uh, city projects. And yes. uh, uh, Japan is uh, developing on, on the on this industrial park on the southwestern part of uh, Yangon area. Do you, do you think that uh, regionalizing by each country is uh, occurring in, in Yangon? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, this project is uh, for the PPP project uh, by the Myanmar government and also Myanmar local We have uh, uh, um, from the side. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sorry. Oh, you had some technical difficulties. So, so can you repeat your yes. answer? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so uh, this project is a PPP project uh, by Myanmar government and also uh, Myanmar local company. Uh, so um, this is uh, the, the, the national, uh, national scale project, but um, we are trying to get more investment from foreign side. Very luckily, uh, our site is very near from KMIC. So we are expect more synergy effect uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the, the part partnership together in, in our uh, flagship, uh, flagship township uh, 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 economic uh, the uh, cooperating uh, system. So um, uh, the this area Hlegu area is uh, actually very important. the axis uh, of Myanmar country because um, uh, our site across, uh, is uh, across by uh, uh, Yangon Mandalay Expressway. It is the, the, the closest way for the uh, Nepido and Yangon, also Mandalay. So this area is uh, has the very uh, potential uh, logistic hub uh, capability, I think. So, um, so this, I hope, uh, we hope that the, uh, not only KMIC, we hope uh, the more uh, uh, Korea government uh, the, the, um, uh, interesting uh, for the investment for Hragu area, uh, uh, Hragu area uh, for the Yangon region uh, development project. So uh, we hope that, we hope that because um, uh, this area has very uh, big potential for the development of uh, in Yangon region. So uh, this is my uh, opinion, but also may, there are many kind of uh, another uh, development project in Yangon also, but also uh, this site has very big potential with KMIC and also not only KMIC, there is Han Tawadi new airport project. So uh, I think uh, Korea side or so we need to uh, focus and in, uh, have some more uh, concentrate in, in this uh, uh, site, in this area. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, mm -hmm. is, any, is there any question? Please raise your hand. Is uh, uh, Professor Jin Jin Shue online right now? Uh, probably not. Professor Kang, do you have any questions? Hmm. Uh, I have questions. Okay. 
As regarding the uh, project funding issue, uh, you told me that the uh, less than 30% uh, are for the foreigners ownership and the uh, majority is uh, the uh, local, uh, the Myanmar entities ownership. And the uh, foreigners investors point of view, uh, if there is the, uh, I mean, given the uh, expected risk uh, uh, and the expected return not matching, then the uh, very difficult to uh, make decision in investment. So the uh, investment is not only matter of the law and regulation and business prospectors, but also measured uh, on, on the funding side. I mean, the uh, uh, investment side. So, uh, do you do you think that the any policy change about the uh, weight uh, of the uh, of foreigners ownership currently uh, uh, thirty five percent to upward side? Uh, what do you think? Yes. Uh... So for uh, Myanmar case, uh, the development project is very difficult to uh, make a success. Uh, so uh, the, the main point is, major point is uh, the, the, the how we how can make a, a financing from the uh, foreign side. So uh, ecoglacy project also have a big issue for making in, uh, investment. Uh, for infrastructure, the, uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, mm. uh, the, this is only the uh, our strategy for making infrastructure uh, uh, for ecosystem. So, mm. uh, not only thirty percent. We hope uh, over 30% for the investment for infrastructure. But uh, for real, it is very uh, difficult to make a project successfully. So uh, we hope that uh, we can get more investment for, uh, uh, for the in infrastructure from the government side, uh, mm -hmm. from the government side, but also uh, the, uh, or uh, AIIB like that. I'm trying to get more investment from for, for our uh, financing uh, strategy. I see. Uh, currently, uh, uh, there are three uh, Korean banks uh, recently uh, uh, preparing for the uh, new business in Yango. And the, uh, but the uh, uh, Yango official steps maybe lack of some experience of the investment project, maybe through the Yango office of uh, Korean Bank. Uh, if you contact the, some, the head of the level uh, on the potential uh, on the Yango project, then the, they may uh, provide some useful uh, solution, I see. Thank you. This process is uh, session, and I, uh, I really appreciate uh, uh, the part participate, participation from the Myanmar, uh, <laughs> especially uh, Mike. <laughs> answering all the questions and uh, I appreciate also also the participation on, on, on the conference room here in Myanmar. So this will uh, uh, be the end of the session 2B of the conference and thank you for your participation. Thank you. Uh,